Hey everybody, what's going on? Leonardo2003 here, and today we're going to review episode 10A of Rise of the TMNT, Stuck on You. Now this was an exciting episode. It had tons of great villain action, and some great comedy too. Don't get me wrong, it had its small flaws, but this episode was fantastic. So let's get into it. We start off in Donnie's lab. The turtles are all freaking out, and for pretty good reason. Just look at them. In a really weird but meaningful way, Raphael used Donnie's fab spray to stick them all together. Raphael wanted his brothers to become closer and become a better team. Although this was a really silly way to do it, his intentions were right, and I liked it a lot. Leo had one of the best lines of the series so far. He says, is this what it feels like to have a dad bod? Donnie's fab spray is still in beta, just like all of his inventions, so he doesn't have any idea how he can get them unstuck. Donnie's computer starts going off, alarming the turtles that there's crime going on in the city. I think that's really cool. I love how Donnie is really tuned in to the city's crimes. Another hilarious part comes up, where Donnie has to tell his brothers his password to his computer since he has no arms. If you guys haven't seen these scenes yet, you gotta go watch. This episode was absolutely hilarious. After a few failed attempts, Donnie reveals his password, BootyShaker9000, with a capital B and three Ys. They see that the crime is happening in a museum, so they go to the turtle tank to get into the city. But they can't fit in the turtle tank, so Donnie says that they should take the shell hogs. This is the debut of the shell hogs in Rise, but we have seen them before in the action figure form. Raph asks why there's only two, and Tani says that the others will be finished before the holiday season. That's hilarious because the toys only have two shell hogs out right now, and the next two shell hogs will be released in the second line of the Rise toys, right around Christmas time. I don't think I've ever heard a TMNT show directly reference the figures like this. Anyways, the guys hop on the hogs and arrive at the museum. They actually crash the shell hogs when they get there, so I hope Donnie was able to repair them. They go in to check out the scene. The guys are getting really frustrated already because that they're glued together, and Raph is the only one staying positive. When he read that pep talk off his hand, I actually cracked up laughing. We see a statue that looks pretty familiar here. It's a classic easter egg, being a sculpture of Andy Suriano's head an executive producer of Rise of the TMNT. But the turtles end up breaking that and a bunch of other statues, and then they see their first villains, the mutant silverfish. It's cool to see these guys again, but then Hypnopotamus appears. His intention in this episode is to resurrect Doug, the original hippo that he used when he was a human. And then the foot arrived through a crazy portal. They're after a mysterious new gauntlet in the museum. And if that wasn't enough, we then finally get the return of Warren Stone. I've missed this little guy. The turtles are all fighting over which villain they should go after first. They choose to first go after the mutant silverfish by using their ball form as a giant boulder, squishing the silverfish along with Warren Stone. This was pretty good teamwork. After that, the turtles go after Hypno. He's about to resurrect Doug through some weird mummy artifact. The Hypno uses his very powerful hypnosis, but it only affects Raph and not the other turtles. The other guys attack Hypno, and he pretty much does nothing to defend himself. He just lets the turtles defeat him like it's nothing, and it kind of pissed me off. Last but not least, it's time to confront the foot. They got the gauntlet that they were after, which was an awesome giant fist with these superpowers but it's so powerful that it breaks the glue that was holding the turtles together. This got Raph pretty upset. His plan was to bring the guys closer together and turn them into a better team. His brothers all sympathize with him and agree to get stuck back together again, using Warren Stone as a rope. The turtles then begin to kick the foot brute's butt. Then the lieutenant summons some origami ninjas, but the turtles smash them all and then send the foot through their portal out the museum. It turns out that the foot left the gauntlet behind. Warren Stone is the last one left, and he finds it. He puts it on, and it gives him a supersized arm, and more power. 
And then the episode ends there. So let's start off right there. Maybe Warren Stone will start to become a more serious villain for the Turtles. He has found different ways to increase his strength, and now he just needs to become a little bit smarter. He's definitely hilarious, and I'm really happy that they brought him into this episode. But the crazy amount of villains in this episode was a little bit silly. But it was still awesome. Who doesn't want to see these cool villains? Hypno, The Foot, and Warren Stone are all some of my favorites. And I like the Silverfish too. I still can't wait to see where they come from. It was really cool to see Hypnopotamus trying to resurrect Doug. It was just nice seeing the writers not forget about the origin of Hypnopotamus. And of course, there was the foot. They're going after another gauntlet. I definitely think that they're following orders from someone else. And I'm guessing that's going to be the Shredder, who I think will debut in Season 2. But don't quote me on it. This episode had some of my favorite interactions between the Turtles. It also really showed why Raph is starting to be one of my favorite characters. He really does take pride in being the leader of the team. Although being the leader might not be in his blood, he still tries really hard, and it's pretty nice to see. His brothers don't always take him seriously, and for good reason in this episode. His glue idea was pretty dumb, but the intentions were good. The idea actually worked, and it brought the turtles closer together and it showed them how to be a better team. Man, I actually loved this episode. It was a 9.5 out of 10, and one of my favorites so far. But guess what? We've got a huge episode coming up this weekend, Bug Busters. Check out my last few videos for some updates on that highly anticipated episode. So what do you guys think of this episode? Let me know in the comments. I bet a lot of you guys love this one. The comedy and all of the cool villains the episode just had it all. You can't really ask for much more from an 11 minute episode. And this will be the last video that I accept questions for my Q&A. Use hashtag AskLeonardo2003 and ask your question and I'll answer it. I would just like to take this time right now to say how hyped I am for Rise of the TMNT right now. This episode was fantastic. And the, uh, the Hypno Part Deuce episode, that was pretty good. But Stuck on You was really good. And then we've got Bug Busters, the 30 minute special featuring the debut of Big Mama and the return of Baron Draxum. And this is just an awesome time to be a Rise of the TMNT fan. It's just craziness. Just about like five years ago, there was only the 2003 series and the 87 series. Now, the whole 2012 series happened. And now we've got Rise of the TMNT making its own fans as well. It's just an awesome time to be a TMNT fan, guys, and don't take it for granted. Because after Rise of the TMNT ends, I think Nick is going to take a little break from TMNT for a few years, and then they're going to come back and rebuild the brand again. Sorry for going off topic there, guys. I'm just really hyped up for Rise of the TMNT right now. This Bug Busters episode is definitely the most highly anticipated of the series so far, so it's just got me all hyped up, and it's awesome. But I will save the Bug Busters talk for the video review coming probably Sunday, maybe Monday. Thanksgiving is coming up, so there might be some family stuff going on for me. But I will try to get the Bug Busters review out as soon as possible. But yeah, back to Stuck on You. The episode was fantastic. I think it's the second highest rated episode so far for me. I think I gave uh, Mystic Mayhem... I think I gave that a 9.5 out of 10, and I think I gave Origami Tsunami a 9.5 out of 10. So, I mean, it's pretty much tied for my favorite episode so far, which is absolutely crazy. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. All of the villains, I mean, it was a little silly, but, I mean, it worked. It just worked because the villains are all so great, and there's all we just we want to see more of these villains. So, having them all have so much screen time, it was just awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the episode. And then ask me any questions that you might have for me. So thank you guys so much for watching again. And peace out.